Hey guys, what's happening? So hopefully this video is working. So this is a different situation than I'm normally used to. Normally you see me making videos in my garage, but this is actually what I really do for a living. Uh, IT and cabling contractor. So this is a blank office that I have to wire and install a new network. So not a big fan of those open commercial ceiling looks. Um, you would think that it would be easier to run wires like that. Um, but the problem is you have to hide the wires now. So if you had a drop ceiling, it would actually be easier because you, would, you don't have to worry about hiding the wires. This way I'm going to have to wrap around the poles and stuff. And so there's five different cube sections here. And I'm only going to run one wire per cube section. Um, and then run a switch under the desk to feed these cubes for these little sections here because I mean, ideally, that's not the right way of doing it. The right way of doing it would have a dedicated wire, but they might get rid of these desks eventually and get something else. So, um, all right, so I'm going to be using Ubiquity. That's the 10 gig stuff right there. So it's a Dreambox, 10 gig uh, version of the Dreambox, 24 port PoE switch, gigabit or 10 gigabit. And then those are 16 port gigabit PoE that's going to go under the desk. And then I'm gonna have two access points. One on this side, let's see if you can see my hand, one on this side and one on that side. And then it's gonna go on this small little rack right here. Um, because everything's open, there's really no, there's no wiring closet, there's no server room. So 99% of the jobs I do is I usually run wires into a server room or some kind of server closet. Uh, but because of this look, it's all gonna go come down this pillar. And I'm actually in a high rise building right now, if you can see that. Um, on the seventh floor, maybe you can see that. But uh, platinum cable, fire ready cable, and that's our current internet connection right there. That's Frontier 700 megabit internet connection. So this is probably <laughs> you guys probably aren't used to seeing videos like this from me, but uh, this is actually what I really do for a living: IT and cabling. So tonight I'm not going to do any cabling. I'm going to just kind of do some prep work, figure out how I'm going to run the wires and. I'm, just, I'm actually going to get the uh, network up and running, pre-programmed, fire all up, get the internet going, uh, access points programmed. So I'm going to get the whole network programmed and in the, in the, the box. Um, yeah, this is my camera. I'm used to using my camcorder. But, um, all right, so that thing was like 100 bucks. Yeah, it was pretty expensive. The uh, 10 gig stuff is pretty expensive. All PoE, so. Um, all right, I'm going to start getting this rack fired up. All right, so here's a closer look at the rack. And actually, I'm not a big fan of the glass racks. Um, the glass racks that actually have the enclosed sides um, and uh, stuff on them are actually way louder. Well, I mean, they're louder because you have to put extra fans in there and they don't have any ventilation in them. So I definitely prefer the open grate racks. That came with that screw box. It should have wheels on it, so hopefully it can, I can mount this to the ground. But... Uh, all right, so the way I'm going to rack this is I'm going to have the patch panel up here. I'm going to have a 24-port patch panel. Then I'm going to have the 24-port switch. Sorry. And then the firewall. Then I'm going to have a shelf here to store the ISP equipment, the fiber optic stuff. Then I'm going to have a UPS, which I don't have yet, a 1U UPS battery backup. And so like I was saying earlier, it's a 700 megabit uh, fiber optic connection from Frontier. So that's actually fiber optic cable coming right there. Yeah, I used to run fiber um, about 10 years ago, but uh, nobody ever called me about it. So the tools were expensive, the testing tools were expensive, and nobody ever called me about it. So I just stopped running it. All right, so if you're not familiar with the Dreambox, it's actually a uh, firewall uh, DVR. So if you had a video camera system, you could put a 3.5 inch hard drive right there. It's also an integrated cloud key too, or cloud controller. So you don't need to buy like a separate cloud key, but... Uh, I've installed, this is my, I think my fourth one I've installed, the Dream Boxes. Um, I mean, Ubiquity is not perfect. I can tell you that for sure. The firewall is not like a real firewall. So if you need like real firewall features, um, I'd probably go with like a Cisco ASA or something better. Um, but typically, most companies don't aren't protecting fire or uh, web servers or email servers. So this company is all cloud-based, so the firewall is not that important. So I might have some remote access VPN tunnels. 
um, all their, their, their PBX is, is cloud-based, it's a host of PBX. So I don't have a phone system to protect. I mean, all their, they use like salesforce.com. So nothing really to protect in here internally that much. So, um, but yeah, the firewall is definitely not the greatest. <laughs> Mainly like one-to-one -one NAT rules. I, mean, I can go on into it, you know, if you wanted to, but yeah, especially one-to-one -one NAT and a few other things too, but intrusion detection, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna take out the uh, Frontier, the provider router. Um, this thing basically is uh, horrible, uh, mainly because they're gonna have SIP-based SIP phones, hard phones. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to turn off the SIP ALG, and that can prob or create problems with phones. But uh, so I'm gonna unplug this router. Yeah, I forget this is not a wide angle lens like my camcorder. So I'm gonna take that out. Oh, I get this thing for the ready for the first fire plug in my LAN cable, my laptop cable, so I can do the initial programming. This is the internet enable from Frontier. Should be set to dynamic right now, so I should hopefully be able to pick up an IP address from Frontier, uh, a public IP address. Uh, get some power on it, fire it up, and uh, kind of go through and just, because I want to make sure that all this stuff works before the move-in day. So I want to know if there's going to be problems now before they actually move in. So get everything going, tested. All right, so there's the mock-up. So I have the two access points. And I wish Ubiquity would actually make these things not so off-white because every Ubiquity access point I ever touched, you barely touch it and it leaves like a dirty mark. So I always have to go back up and wipe them down. But even when you wipe them down, it's a headache. So I wish they would maybe give it sort of a slightly, like a sheen to it so it didn't actually pick up your dirt. Um, like I said, so eventually this will be Alpha battery backup in there, but for now, since I just want to make sure everything works, I got powered on here. So getting no power. Mm -hmm. That's a weird situation. The power that was working there a second ago no longer works. So I moved over to here. Yeah, they're actually going to put more power in here, like another power panel here. All right. Um. Okay. So yeah, I do like how the uh, the new the ubiquities now actually have like that little screen in the front. It's pretty cool. Little LCDs, so they can tell you to tap and different things like that. So all right, so now I got to find a place to plug my laptop in at. And uh, so if you're going to program one of these, make sure you actually have the user account created already. Um, so like I created a new user account for this customer uh, so they can log in remotely and do stuff. But yeah, make sure it's already activated before you even go through the initial programming. Just makes it a lot easier. All right, so I'm going to do the initial uh, UDM configuration, the Dream Machine. Yeah, this is not going to be like a video about how to program this thing. Because um, I think I've made other videos about that. Um, this is really just going to be how to build an office with Ubiquity. You know, the general like wiring and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, because I mean, I, I got to create a new network for this thing and I got to do firmware updates and just, you know, make sure everything's communicated. You know, everything's actually adopted on the network. So, all right. Yeah, I'm getting 700 uh, megabits. That's 700 megabits upload. This is a symmetrical connection, 700, 700. So that's a really good connection. Uh, asymmetrical would be like if you had more download than you had upload, but this is symmetrical 700. So this was I can't think, over a, definitely over a thousand a month. Yeah, the reason why I had everything connected right away is because I knew it would actually discover the devices. So I had the four switches and the two access points. And I'm missing, um, what am I missing here? I'm missing, well, actually, I'm missing that fifth switch, but that hasn't come in the mail yet. All right, actually I'm not seeing the access points, but I'm gonna take a look for that. Um, well, I'm hoping those things, they should be PoE, so they're not PoE, it's gonna kind of bug me. Well, I see one powered on. Um, but yeah, they should definitely be both showing up there. Like I said, I wanna do firmware updates and connecting, provisioning. I don't know if you can see that. My camera phone is not very good. Um, adopting. 16-port PoE. So yeah, it's getting nicer. I'm going to be able to manage it all from one screen. So when the, if the, the customer has problems, I can log into this thing remotely and go, okay, well, the switch is down. I can see how the client's connected. Um, yeah, my background's in Cisco, and I've been doing Cisco my whole life, so like the last 20 years. 
But this is for the amount for what you get for the money money you spend is incredible. Like do all this in Cisco would probably cost you twenty five grand. You know, at least with the access points, you need a wireless controller. You know, uh, the switches cost three or four grand each. You know, um, well at least the high end iOS based Cisco stuff, not like the cheaper stuff. Like the Linksys, you know, the business class series is more like a based on the original Linksys. You know, li the Linux based. Uh, open WRT stuff. All right, so I'm just doing the upgrades. Confirm upgrade. I'm just kind of going through each device and looking for upgrades. Okay, upgrade. That's another one of the switches. AC access points to be upgraded. Yeah, I'm pretty much sure everything will need to be upgraded. The last thing I'm going to do is the firewall. Because when I do the firewall, it's going to reboot the whole network. Um, so I want to make sure that the smaller devices are actually upgraded and working because you don't want to break your device. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. You don't want to actually, if you if you reset a device halfway through a firmware upgrade, you can actually break the device. Um, brick meaning uh, permanently wreck the device where you have to take it apart and flash the, manually flash the uh, software on the device, you know, either with a JTAG or it could be USB port, it could be anything. So, but yeah, it's no fun, so. All right, so the last thing I'm doing is updating the uh, firewall or the, or the dream box. Um, yeah, we like to get everything done first because when you said when you redo this, it's going to reboot the internet connection. So, so if you guys are new to cabling, uh, Cat5 wire can only handle 100 megabits. Cat5e can handle gigabit, and Cat6 and above can handle gigabit or 10 gigabit. Um, but yeah, see this one right here? It's connected to 100 megabits. So what's interesting about Cat5 wires is it's the exact same pairs, but it just doesn't negotiate at a higher higher rate. And you can tell that because this one is actually blinking yellow and the rest are blinking green. And this is an old Cat5 wire, not Cat5e. So this was Cat5e you would negotiate at uh, gigabit. And what's funny is it's just the actual uh, diameter of the wire the gauge of the wire and how many twist. So what they do is Cat 5e has more twist and it's typically might sometimes well not all the time. It's usually a heavier gauge of wire, but just more twist to prevent crosstalk. But uh, yeah, this is just a test anyways. It's not. I mean, I'm gonna eventually have Cat 5e wire. But all right, so kind of been going today. Test is going. Uh, yeah, typically I do this in reverse order. I mean, normally I would cable the office first. But right now we're having a supply issue, and I don't know if you can see that out there, but I'm going to turn the lights off. But actually, I'm in Huntington Beach, and I'm in a high rise, so I'll show you the ocean. Maybe we can see some container ships out there. So all the hardware and all our stuff, man, for the whole, half the country is sitting offshore. So let me show you that real fast. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's the ocean out there. And if you can see the lights way out there, are some blinking lights. If you're wondering all your stuff is at, all your materials, well, it's offshore in those container ships. So there's hundreds of container ships offshore. Like, so during the day, you can really see those container ships. It's crazy. Like, serious backup. But, yeah, even just getting stuff on Amazon Prime would normally take two days. It's taking me up to five days sometimes. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'd do this normally, this job in reverse order. I'd have the wiring done first and an IT portion done. Well, yeah, when I'm finishing up, it'd be the IT side, so... All right, guys, let's be done for phase one and be back tomorrow. Hopefully the wire will be here and I'll start doing the wiring.